good day. I welcome you all in our YouTube channel of Trishla Foundation that is for cerebral palsy children and their parents. Today I am going to talk about the bone health in the children with cerebral palsy and normal developing children, how they differ and how we can manage the good quality of bone in adulthood, even in old age, who is affected by cerebral palsy. The bone quality in adulthood and old age is totally different upon quality of calcium storage in the bone achieved in the childhood and early adult life. If intake of calcium and vitamin is less along with the less physical exercises, even in normal children, then they are very very prone to develop osteoporosis at very very early age. And that is more true in the case of cerebral palsy. As cerebral palsy children have much more chances of getting weaker bone because they have less weight bearing, less physical activities, less nutritional intake and less exposure to sunlight. So fracture and bone related problems are more common with the children with cerebral palsy, especially who are severely disabled genes S4 and 5, is not able to walk and not able to do lots of activities. Now we need to understand what is the peak bone mass, why it is important for the children, every children. The peak bone mass level is the crucial determinant of the lifetime risk of osteoporosis. As you know that attainment of peak bone mass occur at younger age than previously thought. Now it is confirmed that the peak bone mass is going to achieve between the 18 to 25 years, that is maximum is where we can intake the calcium that is going to deposit in the bone that is 25 years only. So, we have to increase our calcium intake in vitamin D and activities till that age so that our bone quality in adulthood and osteoporosis uh, old age will be much better. So, bone health in childhood is determinant of lifetime risk of osteoporosis as previously I have told you. What is the peak bone mass? Peak bone mass probably result of interaction between endogenous that is inside the body that is a genetic consideration, hereditary, endocrine and exogenous factor like the nutrition, how much we are going to take food and what quality of food we are taking and physical activities is also very very important factor. These two factors are very important to determine what quality of bone we are going to have in adulthood. From 18 8 year to 18 year of age, the bone size and bone mineral density increase rapidly and nearly 60% of the skeletal mass formed during this age and 90% of the bone mass is reached by the age of 18 years. It is so and from 18 to 25 years that is 100% whatever we are going to have the bone meat pass that will be achieved at that age. Now, we like to know also the life cycle of the bone. In children and adolescent, it is the growth phase. In that age, bone mass and size both will increase. But as reaching the adulthood, after the 25-30 year age, the bone is not going to increase. Bone can be removed and replaced silently. That is a normal maintenance phase of the adulthood. In old age, Always there will be bone loss depend upon lots of factor just like the estrogen label in the females after the menopausal and as well as the old age the aging process which is going to develop. Now we like to know why cerebral palsy children are associated with osteoporosis. There is more chances of osteoporosis at very very early age in the children. As you know that cerebral palsy is often associated with premature birth and premature birth child will have the low bone quality bone that is known as a ricketa prematurity. They will have less amount of vitamin D, less amount of bone matrix. So they have a different kind of metabolic bone disease. And along with that, as you know that low birth weight premature infant will have lower than normal bone mineral content when evaluated in the older age groups due to different factors. What are the different factors? This is fat and collagen infiltration of the muscle. The muscle are not mostly muscle. It is infiltrated by the fat and collagens. And the cerebral palsy children will also have the impaired muscle activation and muscle responsibility. 
that lead to the less muscle action, less magnitude, less rate of pregnancy and strain. So there will be less strain on the bone by the muscle. So it will lead to the lesser quality of this bad quality of bone as per the normal children. And there will be also less secretion of the insulin like growth factor. And there will be also fibroblast growth factor too. Both are less. And it happened because of the infiltration of the fat infiltration of the muscle that also decreases the insulin sensitivity. Decreasing the insulin sensitivity, less secretion of insulin like growth factor, fibroblast growth factor 2, so that capacity of bone protein synthesis in the skeletal muscle will be the less. As the protein synthesis in the muscle will be the less, the less strain will be there on the bone, so bone quality will decrease. Along with that, most of the children is suffering with epilepsy, convulsions, so they are taking the anti-convulsion treatment. The anti convulsions medicine have the bad impact on the vitamin D. So if you are not taking the vitamin D calcium supplement in that children, the anti convulsion treatment will also decrease the bone quality. Along with that, in the poor nutrition and less exposure to sunlight will decrease the decrease in intake of protein, calcium, mineral, and by decreased exposure, there will be less vitamin D formation in the body. In cerebral palsy, physical performance deficit occur from very very early age. So bone quality is maintained at very very low level. As we know that bone strength deficit in children with cerebral palsy is unable to walk independently. In that children, the bone loss, bone strength is more than 3 to 5 times lesser than the adult with spinal injury and 15 times lesser than the adult with stroke. So cerebral palsy children are more affected with osteoporosis and poor quality of bone. Because of all those factors, the incidence of bone fracture in children with severe form of cerebral palsy is about 6 to 7, 7 to 9.7 percent. That means in a year, who is affected with severe cerebral palsy? 7 to 9.7 percent of children will get fracture in one year. That means there is uh, incidence prevalence is very very high. The, in that fracture, the incidence of fracture of the lower part of femur near the knee joint is very very common. That is the commonest site of fracture in the supracondylar femur area near the knee joint. Now we like also like to know about the osteoporosis. What is the osteoporosis? What kind of osteoporosis these children can have and other children will have? One osteoporosis is known as the true osteoporosis. The bone fragility would increase to such an extent that normal physical activity and fall would cause spondylitis fracture and bone pain syndrome affecting the spine and limb. Normally, whatever we see the older is normal population, that is the true osteoporosis. In that case, if they have the osteoporosis, they will have the fracture with sudden fall and there will be pain in the body. Physiological osteoponia is happened because of the reduced bone strength and bone mass due, due to reduced physical activity and muscle strength. As we see in the cerebral palsy, in that case, fracture will not occur without fall or other injuries. But in cerebral palsy, they also have the combination that they have the physiological and the normal process of the true osteoporosis that is known as the combination status. Transient osteoporosis is known in the cases where they have got some serious injuries. If they heal, that osteoporosis will subside because of long bed rest, trauma, uh, plaster application that happen because of the transient osteoporosis. Now, in this slide, you can see that location of the fracture in the cerebral palsy children. We can get fracture anywhere in the body, but lower third femur is the commonest site where these children get fracture. What are the risk factors for the osteoporosis cerebral palsy? If child are non-ambulatory, they are not able to walk and stand independently, lesser intake of the calcium and vitamin D, Difficulty in eating, drinking, swallowing, it will lead to the nutritional deficiency of the calcium, mineral, protein and other thing. Low weight for the age, history of low impact fracture, anti-convulsive medicine use, poor sunlight exposure because most of the children are 
homebound. They are inside the home at most of the time. So there will be lower, poor sunlight exposure that will lead to the less vitamin D formation in the body. If they have weak muscle, that is the most common problem in the cerebral palsy, immobilization because of the plaster or bracing, and rickard of maturity. All these factors will lead to the increased chances of osteoporosis in cerebral palsy children. If you are suspecting the child is having the cerebral palsy, what kind of investigation is required? In these children, you require vitamin D level, calcium, phosphorus, serum alkaline phosphate, and serum thyroid hormone by the blood investigation. X-ray of extremity and spine will also give clue about the osteoporosis. If they are fractured, they will be fractured. And for the final diagnosis, and what are the severity of the osteoporosis? That can get if, uh, that information we can get from the DEXA scan. And DEXA scan is done in the lower spine and proximal femur. After knowing uh, strategy, uh, what are the causes of osteoporosis cerebral palsy children? Now we will discuss the treatment strategies. Treatment of the osteoporosis is physical activities, weight bearing activities, very very important for the decreasing the incidence of the osteoporosis. The physical activity is of extreme importance when it comes to the bone mass accumulation in the children and adolescent. So that physical activity in the form of active weight bearing will lead to the increased bone mass if they are taking sufficient amount of the calcium and protein. To certain degree, physical exercise can compensate for the lack of calcium intake because with physical exercise there will be more strain by the muscle, there will be more strain of the muscle, more uh, blood calcium will deposit in the bone and with lesser amount of the calcium in the blood, they will have the more intake by the GIT absorption. In children and adolescents, they should have more than 60 minutes medium to low intensity physical activity on a daily basis. To ensure optical skeletal development, mechanical loading is very very important. Without mechanical loading of the muscle, the bone quality is not going to improve whatever you can uh, have the good intake of the calcium and protein and vitamins. The early intervention that facilitate improvement in the muscle size, quality, performance and action of the muscle and the bone while increased participation in physical activity is very very important in the long term maintenance of the bone health. Especially muscle based intervention just like walking, running, jumping, sport activity, moving around and those which include the mechanical loading initiated before the puberty are more likely to create positive changes in the bone that are sustained throughout the adulthood. So that our approach should be the walking with or without support, any kind of support, just like the stick, elbow crutches, walker, but child at least should walk. If the child has this cerebral palsy, we have to take increased amount of the calcium and vitamin D and it has also been seen that vibration has the good impact on the bone quality. The minimizing the risk associated with the movement and handling, especially the severely affected cerebral palsy. Because if they fall, if they have severe stretching exercises, they can have the fracture. Register training is very very important to increase the muscle strength that will have the more impact on the bone. But standing frame do not have the, any impact on the bone quality as seen in the long term. They cannot prevent the low mineral density in children with cerebral palsy. If we are suspecting the osteoporosis in cerebral palsy children, we should go for the investigation like the DEXA scan. DEXA scan is a very very simple procedure just like the x-ray machine in which they measure the amount of calcium in the bone, they will determine and most of the places they will do the lumbar spinal upper uh, femur area and sometimes whole body exercise can, can be done. If child is several, affected is severely affected cerebral palsy, then this phosphonate is very very important for this individual. Sometimes it can be given by the intravenous injection under the uh, practitioner guideline, especially by the pediatrician or pediatric orthopedic surgeon 
or oral can be given that can be advised only after the detailed consultation by the concerned authorities. What are the recommended dietary calcium intake? 0 to 6 months, they require 200 mg per day. In 1 to 3 years, 700 mg, 4 to 8 years, 1000. And in 9 to 18 years, when the peak increase in the height and weight of the child, there will be increased amount of the requirement of the calcium that go up to the 1300 mg. And after that, they require the 1000 mg for the whole life. But maximum 2.5 gram of the calcium can be tolerated. Vitamin D supplementation in children exclusively or partially breastfed in fans, they require 400 international units per day shortly after the birth and continue until the child is weaned. In fans and vitamin D fortified formula and whole milks, they require minimum 1000 ml of milk per day. And sun exposure is very very important for them also. Children between the 1 to 18 year age, they require 600 to 1000 international units of vitamin D. But in cerebral palsy children, because they are most of the time inside, they require higher doses of supplement of nutritional or sunlight exposure vitamin D. Other mineral requirement for the good bone health is the phosphorus, magnesium, vitamin K, E, A, C, micronutrient like copper, magnesium, zinc, iron. All these should be supplemented in the diet or supplementation should be taken in the form of tablet or syrup just as a supplementary vitamins and combination of that one. Calcium and mineral is fruit food products. They are rich. They are found in the milk product, just like curd, milk, ragi, soya bean, chickpea, nuts like the almond, peanut, walnut, dried flax, figs, papaya, green leafy vegetables like the spinach, amaranth, mustard green, beet greens, okra, beans will have the high amount of the calcium, seeds like the sesame seeds, garden, grass seeds, salem, basil seeds, Beans and lentils just like rajma, green gram, black beans, all they will have the high amount of the calcium. In last, I want to say that bone quality in old age depends upon quality of calcium storage in bone as it is childhood. And attainment of pin bone marks occur at the 25 year age. CP children have more chances of the weak bone, bone due to less weight bearing, less nutritional intake and less exposure to sunlight. Active physical exercises, right amount of calcium, vitamin D, protein intake are very very important to prevent osteoporosis in children with cerebral palsy. I have mentioned some bibliography, some journal, the international journal where you can get lots of information about this issues what I have discussed here. So, I have discussed very very important topic for all of you because bone health is very very important with cerebral palsy children. Because they are going to have osteoporosis as they go into adult and older age. You can prevent it, you can delay it. As lots of information are given this slide, if any queries are there, put it in the comment box, send to us, we will try to reply it. In next session, we will try to take another topic which is very very important for all of you. Thanks.